is as you go from something like slate slate here more dull this gets even silvery so there's more microcrystals maybe they're getting a little bit bigger but you still can't see them to so this higher grade metamorphism more heat more pressure um, and you really can start seeing the individual microcrystals yeah you can see them like that really good okay now what I so this is um slate phyllite schist now it's hard to tell when is this when does um, slate become phyllite and when does phyllite become schist well that's not always that easy to tell and um, I often compare it to toast okay think about it. you put a piece of bread in a toaster especially if you have a toaster oven you can watch it at what point does that bread stop being bread and start becoming toast well that's hard to tell you may have after a little bit it gets a little bit dark it's well it's it's a, it's a little bit toasted bread and then and then it gradually becomes toast and uh, there's no definitive line that bread is it's bread and then it becomes toast it gradually does, occurs and I like that comparison to sh say that it gradually becomes um, it gradually moves in the progression along here and then if you have when it gets even more partially melted over here is where you're going to start having your nice and the minerals will start to move a little bit and form those bands okay that those rocks right there are um, again on our earth science reference table they're right here slate phyllite just nice again uh, low grade metamorphism higher grade they're all foliated except the nice has banding which is those different colored layers that's called regional metamorphism and what that means is that a whole big area of rock is under um, other rock and that causes um, lots of heat and pressure that causes regional metamorphism okay and the pressure really causes your foliation now sometimes you have heat only um, and not so much pressure so it's not buried that deep and that's contact metamorphism think about if you have a big um, amount of lava nearby with a lot of heat and that either touches rock or comes near rock really adds a lot of heat but it's not a lot of pressure you get contact metamorphism and uh, you get a metamorphic rock but you don't often see um, you don't often see the layers there now this is a little hard to tell this is a little hard to tell but I'm gonna say this this is um, a metamorphic rock quartzite okay now it's a little hard to really see it there and what that is is that when you get sandstone a rock like this and you see the individual grains of sandstone and we looked at it in sedimentary rock individual grains and it looks very sandy and, and gritty and when these get uh, under a lot of heat, they get it gets partially melted. Let's see, it's going to focus, and they kind of they kind of grow together a bit, or they kind of melt together. And maybe the best comparison I want to use is if I have a bunch of chocolate chips. Let's say these are all chocolate chips, and, and they're kind of stuck together. But if I heat those chocolate chips, they're going to start melting, right? And they're going to start melting into each other and form one big glob of chocolate chips melted together. That's kind of what this is now that I made everyone hungry to go eat a big bunch of chocolate chips but that's kind of what this is and that is quartzite I have another piece of quartzite right here um, and this is one I found in Massachusetts when I was hiking it doesn't look like much and I, you know, I cut the side this summer it's a little hard to see but you can't really see that much now disregard the different colors but if you were you can't see the individual pieces of um, the sand and the sandstone because they've all kind of M melted together by being partially melted so that's quartzite and marble is uh, very similar as well the parent rock of marble is um, limestone or dolostone and it's the way the parent rock of the quartzite is the sandstone that, that this rock turns into quartzite so that's called the parent rock here we go here's another um, example here is a uh, coal bituminous coal the sedimentary rock coal uh, if you watch the sedimentary rock episode you saw that there's a coal there. Now, when this gets under pressure and um, and heat and has chemical reactions, it changes into a metamorphic rock or a metamorphic kind of coal that's called it's called anthracite coal. Okay, and that's what it, this is anthracite right here. And what happens is again, it's chemical reactions that occur. Now, if you want to look at this, you really can notice it is very silvery. It's very silvery to it. It's really cool looking, and this is the highest grade coal. It's called hard coal. If you're going to burn coal to get energy, this is the stuff you want to burn. 
because it has a lot of energy for its size. This has less energy. Now, kids can often... Let me grab this over here. Kids can get that confused. Now, notice there is a difference. Now, I'm pulling out igneous rock. This is um, obsidian. Now, notice the difference. They look do look similar if so you see them next to each other. Obsidian is going to be uh, glassy or darker and not going to have that silver sort of graphite sheen to it. Okay? It just doesn't have that silvery look to it. So, anthracite coal. Now, let me see what else I have. I've got more of this for you here. Okay. This is very cool. So let's, uh, where's our reference table? Here's the reference table. Um, so we did anthracite coal. It's the metamorphism of bituminous coal. Um, Hornfels, I don't have. Quartzite, I kind of showed you. And that is from, the apparent rock is quartz sandstone. When that gets metamorphosed under a lot of um, heat and pressure, sometimes you can or can't may or may not have pressure, becomes quartzite. And metaconglomerate, from the name you could probably understand that that's metamorphosed conglomerate. So, and this is cool, this is very hard for me to, to actually get, but this is our conglomerate, okay? Uh, rounded particles cemented together. Notice there's no real order or pattern, they're kind of just haphazardly in there. Now, if I have a lot of pressure and it pushes down on it this way, like this, the pressure squeezes this together, and it all gets partially melted, kind of gooey. What may result? What might you get? I'm going to show you. Look, you might get something that looks like that. Check that out. That. Look at the pebbles. They, they're, they're stretched. Look how they're all elongated or pulled out this way because they were pushed. The pressure was this way on it. Okay. So as they were partially melted, think of thick toothpaste. They get they get squished and stretched out this way. This is very cool. Here's another piece. It's from the same area in, in Canada. And again, you see they're all stretched out this way. This is metaconglomerate. Okay, it took me a while to get these rocks. I had to order them specifically, just these two. They were expensive, so uh, I don't have a lot of them for class. I just had these two, when we share them. So I think this is very cool, and it's not very often you get to see it. So this conglomerate, this conglomerate when it gets metamorphosed, can look like this. So I think that that's, that's a really good example. So, let's just review a bit. Let's review. Metamorphic rocks often have um, some sort of layering. Foliation is your thin layers, and banding is extreme foliation, higher grade metamorphism, and that's layers of different colors or stripes when the, when the colors kind of separate out. Um, that's banding. So if you see either of those, that is a good indication that you have metamorphic rocks. And then let's just go some other things you may see. Metamorph rock layers of foliation or banding, as we said. High mica content because the chemical reactions that occur turn minerals into mica um, or banding. Those are things you want to see for metamorphic rocks. And um, I hope that that helps, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, enjoy metamorphic rocks and all rocks. For Mr. Gazda, have a good day.